It's yet another glorious, bright, sunny midsummer summer's day in London. And I'm off to cool off with a bit of skiing in Dubai. And that means a trip on the Emirates A380. Coming up, a look at those bigger, wider Emirates business class seats. All the in-flight drinks in full. The ultra-exclusive world of Emirates business class hot cuisine. Or at least that's what they told me it was. Now that Emirates have formally announced that it's the only commercial airline in the world to be serving Verve Clico on board, I've got to try it, along with the finest of the gourmet dessert selection. All the cocktails, and I do mean all the cocktails, as I sample my own private bar at 35,000 feet. First, I've got to get to the airport, and that means a hideously early start, and I'm the only chap in the village trying to catch a bus when there are none. Now, I don't mean to be funny or anything, but the great flaming ball in the sky has been up since the Cracker Sparrow, shining a light more brightly over the land of Diddley Squat. So, I've got to get a bus, a train, and then another train to London's premier Bucket and Spade Airport. Nope, I'm not flying to Australia from the glorious wonders of Heathrow. Oh no, that would be far too conventional. No, Emirates now fly twice a day to both of London's other airports and fly the whopping 500-seat Super Jumbo to Gatwick, the land that classy aviation forgot. And that's why I'm on yet another train. Yeah, the train from Gatwick South to Gatwick North. Check-in is just upstairs, but I'm going to pop outside for a moment, and I may be some time. Well, here we are. We're at London, but unusually at Gatwick Airport in the hot, bright sunshine at 7 in the morning. Unusually, we're going to be flying out of Gatwick, but this time on Emirates, going down to Dubai on an A380 in business class. OK, let's go. I can't linger longer loiter because I've got to check in in case there's absolutely nobody here. Now it's peak holiday season, one of the biggest weekends of the year for travel and Gatwick should be a heaving mass of humanity. Instead, check-in took nearly 30 seconds and when asked about fast track, the crew advised me not to bother as there isn't even the slightest hint of a queue. Has everybody in the home counties decided to stay at home this summer? After a quick glance at my A380, slowly baking in the hot, steamy sunshine of Sussex and promised it I'd see it in a moment. So it had to be a good aircraft waiting tied up at the gate and then started thinking about, um, breakfast. Now Gatwick North has got some premier restaurants like Giraffe and Greg's. But I didn't want a pasty, I wanted antipasty. So I wandered along the lounge corridor that was oh so familiar when it belonged to British Airways, now over in the South Terminal, and the Virgin Atlantic Lounge, which has now been taken over by Plaza Premium. Instead, here is the finest lounge known to human, well, at least airline passengers, and that a quality airline can provide at Gatters. It's the Emirates Business Class Lounge. And you know what? I've got it pretty much all to myself. Now, the Emirates Lounge isn't for everyone, because most passengers would balk at paying $155, yep, nearly 130 quid, for a couple of hours in here. And yet, it says something about Emirates that their lounge now operates a pay-in principle rather than being a haven for the elite. But it seems something has gone badly wrong in the land of the accountants. They may have thought it was a great idea, but who wants to cough up 130 of the folding stuff when there's a weather spoons just outside? And I'm glad to say that making it reassuringly expensive to buy entrance to the Emirates Lounge means it's just me and my champagne glass in here and there don't seem to be many other passengers in business class either. 
now you can access the Emirates Lounge at Gatwick with a first-class ticket. But in a moment of also madness, Emirates decided to put their new first-class cabins on the route to London, Stansted, twice a day, leaving Heathrow and Gatwick with the old A380s with old-style seats. Still, more champagne for me. The catering's a little bit old school. Packets of cornflakes and a basic fry up on beige plastic seats remind me a little bit of a. Uh, maybe. a happy eater down on the A303. Indeed, there's such a total absence of passengers in the lounge, its vastness evaporated in a cloud of its own pointlessness. Good mushrooms, though. But spot this. There's a little bench of happiness in the corner. Oh yes, every Emirates lounge around the world operates a full wine bar from early in the morning. There's a comprehensive instruction manual if you want to delve into the tasting notes. And a couple of different types of champagne. We can't possibly go wrong. Now, the spirit selection will never win any awards for its originality, but it might just provide for our long and arduous trek to the aircraft. It's just such a pity that the lounge is so dull. There's a little bit of Dubai bling, but other than that, there are different shades of beige, and that's about it. Now, this area used to be the British Airways Club World Lounge, and I thought when Emirates took it over, they just would actually improve it. No. Alas, sartorial elegance has been left at the door with our roll-on bags. Still, compared to the rest of the lounges at Gatters, it's a haven of tranquility. And the good news is there's free flowing champagne, and I know because I tried both types before settling on the Laurent Perrier as my wake-up juice of choice. It absolutely had to be followed with a Bloody Mary or two before going out to a very, very quiet Gatwick terminal to engage in a fun game. What you do is play bucket and spade bingo. You look lost as you walk up to the gate and seem to blunder into the priority queue. And then you guess which one of the Gatwick Hoi Polloi in that queue will complain that I'm in the wrong line and it's just for first class. And then see how long it'll take for the crew to come over and very rapidly escort me past them while I wave the proletariat a cheery goodbye. Well, there it is, exactly what I got up so early in the morning for. No, not the EasyJet planes taking stag parties off to Prague, or even the distant Fly North 787 making yet another attempt to prove that low-cost long haul is always going to be financially marginal. No, the long walk up the dedicated A380 pier at Gatters. And there it is, the very large business class cabin on the Emirates A380. It's got fully flat beds, which are a delight. Now, on the Emirates Airbus A380-800 aircraft, the seats are a little bit unusual. Half of the seats are much shorter than the others, thanks to the staggered design. Now, the business class seats are arranged in a one-to-one layout, which is quite normal. They provide passengers with direct aisle access and a significant amount of privacy. Each seat faces to the front as well. However, when sliding into flat and level beds, it slips into the mini bar pod in front. Consequently, the aisle seats have a shorter 70-inch bed, while the window and middle seats are longer with a 79-inch bed. Hence, always try and get a window. Now pop down the back spiral stairs into steerage. Now if you really want to fly in the cheap seats in the A380 on Emirates, they've got a 343 configuration. That means you have to hop over two passengers if you get a window seat, but the windows in the A380 are seriously big. There's a 32 inch pitch, 18 inch width, and a whopping 400 seats down here. Wow. There's a 13 inch TV screen. Now, if you don't get into economy much, that is a significantly large screen. And there's also a USB port for charging your phones. 
spot also the mini TV screen on the remote so you can watch the moving map on here whilst something else on the main TV screen and there's also a mini split table so you can get out while somebody next to you is eating. Now this is one of Emirates A380's without premium economy as the airline doesn't offer this class to Gatwick. That's a little bit odd as I thought it might be more popular here. However, it does mean that you've got economy class going all the way to the nose of the aircraft. And just look at the throngs of dozens of people who seem to want to get to Dubai this early on a Sunday morning. I had a look at Emirates First Class as well, with all the bling that Dubai can muster. This is the older style first, with a pop-up minibar, sliding doors, and a four and a half grand price tag. One way to Dubai in sterling. Ouchie. Right, I'm back in my natural environment and I couldn't but help be grateful that it's an Airbus today. If you tried Emirates on the Boeing 777, you'll find that Emirates still insist on kitting out the Boeing with 1990s style recliners in business class and even a middle seat. However, on the Airbus, the seats are wider and they offer much more privacy plus a minibar. Yeah, if it's a Boeing, I'm just not going. Spot the USB charging port and the HDMI inputs. I'll have some fun with those a little later in the flight when I'll show you a neat hack. Emirates Airline and the entire crew, it's a pleasure to welcome you on board flight 12, the Sabres 380 bound for Dubai. The not so good news is, gentlemen, we are expecting a little bit of a delay. We do have a slot out of here. Um, the air traffic is pretty busy over here and over France and over Europe, so as of now, um, ATC has given us a spot with the departure time. We can expect the pushback for about one hour from now, unfortunately. In front of the seat is a large 17-inch entertainment touchscreen. You can control the touchscreen by pressing on it, if you can reach it. However, it's much more convenient to control it by the tablet at your seat. That's one cabin crew will be looking after you today. Flight time to Dubai, 6 hours and 20 minutes, and we'll be cruising at 39,000 feet, then make our way up to 41,000 feet. If only Emirates would still honour bookings made on Qantas for their chauffeur cars on the plane, instead of forcing me onto early morning trains, I wouldn't feel like it was late afternoon. So, an hour-long delay before we take off. At least welcome drinks of juice and champagne are on offer. No amenity kits, though. As part of Emirates, major cutbacks are only available on overnight flights, and instead, they suggest you go to the bathroom for a toothbrush. It's time to push back and spot the pier bridge that spans a live taxiway, which had to be wide and high enough to allow an aircraft the size of a jumbo to pass underneath. Other airports which have a similar bridge build cocktail bars or hotels on the top floor. At Gatwick, we get a WH Smith. And there we go, boarding's completed on the Emirates A380 and so far, really not too bad at all. Let's see how the flight goes. Through the flight, we're going to take off from runway 08 right, cross the English Channel, fly over Brussels and pretty much track a straight line across Europe, over Germany, Vienna, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Fly across Turkey, down over Iran and towards the UAE. We're getting into Dubai this evening and uh, should really not be much traffic uh, at our arrival time. And Dubai expecting it to be a little bit warm this evening. Pretty good menus, alas Emirates has cut down on the meal service and only one meal is now offered in business class as opposed to the previous two. This is served shortly after takeoff. Junky cardboard for the menus, uh, and that's what they're made out of, not the food, at least hopefully. And most importantly, a very good cocktail list. We might just survive. A nice touch on the A380 is a personal minibar, stocked with soft drinks, sparkling water and juice. Cabin crew, please prepare for departure. 
Finally, an hour late, and we're on our way. And listen to those Rolls Royce Trent 900 spool up. Great, over the channel and heading to Belgium. I know on these flights the crew were notably tardy in starting the first drink service, so once the seatbelt sign is off, it's much easier to wander back to the onboard bar to get yourself one. It can get pretty lively in here when the football is showing on the big screen late in the evening. Might as well start off with a classic champagne cocktail. After all, the hour-long delay means it's now almost midday. Noise-reducing headphones are also provided. They're not the best in class, but they're pretty decent. On the A380, there are joys of actually no less than three TV controllers. Along with the main screen, each in business class not only has a tablet, which is detachable and large enough to show things like the moving maps. Emirates call it the mode controller, and you can use it to adjust your seat lighting controls and also browse through the entertainment list. There's also an external camera which you can put on here and on the moving map whilst you enjoy something else on the big screen. The tablet can be released from its dock and display content and control the seat wirelessly. That's handy if you plan on adjusting your seat while standing up. Alas, one of the weakest elements about the Emirates experience is the in-flight entertainment program, which is called ICE. That stands for Information, Communications and Entertainment. There are dozens of films and TV box sets listed, but it must be said finding anything worthwhile among that lot can be a struggle. Next to the seat, there's a mains power socket plus that USB port and a reading light. The fold-out tray table is hidden in the armrest below the console. Emirates offer free onboard Wi-Fi if you're a member at any level of Skywards, and even those without status can enjoy free messenger services in business class. As a goal, this works quickly and well. There's also a paid service at $20 for the flight. There's live TV as well, and unlike many Emirates flights I've been on in the past few weeks, it actually works. Admittedly, it's a little bit slow, but you can get BBC World News live, as well as CNN, Sky News, and also Sports 24. If you can't find anything on the IFE, it's good for an hour or two while you're having dinner. There are also three cameras installed the tail, nose and belly of the A380 so you can see where you are. Now did you ever wonder why Singapore Airlines in first class stopped serving Dom Perignon? Well Emirates have just done a very Emirates thing. They've brought the rights to be the only airline to serve Moe Chandon, Verve Clicquot and Dom Perignon on board. Indeed they bought up pretty much the whole of the wine cellar. Emirates has formally announced its pairing with Verve Clicquot in business class, and it must be said, much to other airlines' annoyance. Verve Clicquot superb though, with a tiny knit flavour focused by robust acidity and a streak of minerality. This offers subtle noses of white peach, anise, biscuit and kumquat. The crew asked if I'd like my nuts warmed and it would be rude to say no. Alas, the crew on this flight didn't have an amuse bruche loaded, so instead they suggested that I could take some Arabic chocolates before dinner. Unusual. 
Great to have a cocktail light to illuminate the table as I reduce the wine for lunch and swing out that bigger, wider Emirates business class table. For the starter, there was smoked salmon served on a potato pancake with caperberry, dill oil and yogurt dressing. On the side is a seasonal side salad with a lime dressing. This was really good indeed. To accompany my salad, I went for the Chardonnay Mountain Select Napa Valley from the United States from 2020. Now this wine bursts with citrus, green apple and pear aromas and it's got a bright refreshing palate with subtle oak and spice notes. The grapes for the Chardonnay were hand-picked in the early morning to preserve freshness and the wine was fermented in French oak barrels to add complexity and richness. Trust me, it's very good. I had to go back for another couple of glasses. Nice to see mini olive oil and balsamic vinegar served on these flights. Now to go with the salmon, I switched on to the La April de Frienzala 2019 from Bordeaux. A very modern wine, clever and full of life, and it's got a remarkable refined character. You can really taste and smell the terroir coming through in here. Great to see Emirates still using proper cutlery on board these flights. So what shall I have for lunch as we head down to Greece? Well, there's the herb-crusted veal with Dijon mustard. It's served with sautéed mushrooms, brown butter, carrot puree, and crushed potatoes, along with capers and gherkins. That sounds superb. Oh dear. You know when you're presented with horrible food and it tastes delicious? This was not it. Now I know Emirates Catering has come in for some stick recently, and now I know why. It might just have been acceptable in premium economy, but just what Emirates thought they were doing, serving this up, it's dry, tasteless, and in a premium cabin, yeah, really doesn't cut it. It was truly woeful. Even the bread roll had more flavor. I think the only thing making this dish palatable was the Reserve de la Comtesse 2011 Bordeaux. I made a comment to the crew who were increasingly looking like the dictionary definition of beleaguered and just muttered that the food typically congeals when catering has had to be delivered from Heathrow and the truck drives around the M25 to Gatwick. I looked to them askance and balefully carried on with the task of eating ashes and coals on my way to the Black Sea, which is kind of appropriate. So I took the wild berry and almond tart. I was really looking forward to this, and it might just have cut it at, say, Starbucks at Paddington Station, but it had clearly seen better days, and the flavor was so absent I couldn't spot it with a microscope. Faced with such horrors as we went further east over Bucharest, I was quite literally forced to dive headfirst into the wine lake again, metaphorically speaking, that is. And the EU didn't disappoint with a superb drop from Tuscany. The Croggio Temputa Potti is a rustic, robust Italian red wine with a tart black fruit and lots of oak. A big wine with lots of acidity, it wouldn't be out of place at a motorway service station heading to Milan. But it's a great driving wine and superb if somebody else is doing the driving at 41,000 feet. I was quite glad I'd stepped out of the cockpit today and somebody else could point the nose in the right direction. Compare and contrast now. It's time for cheese. And this was brilliant, particularly the Colson Bassett Stilton, which is matured by Neil's Yard Dairy in London and is the absolute best there is. Equally, the Barber Cheddar is made by a family who've been making cheddar since 1833. It makes them one of the oldest cheese families in England. It's top notch and can't be faulted. Well done, Emirates. Time to slide away that huge walnut tray as we head over Turkey. The tablet with the at-seat moving mat pops out from the holder, but don't get any bright ideas about walking off with it off the plane. And the tablet's got an inbuilt alarm and it doesn't work. So a kick back with yet another glass of Napa Valley Chardonnay. It really is getting better the further down the bottle I get. And then settled in to watch a film with the rug over my knees. After all, it gets cold in the desert at night. 
Now, struggling finding something to watch on Emirates Ice Systems, so it was time to try a great Emirates hack. Emirates has got free fast Wi-Fi and business class, but it's also got an HDMI input socket for the vast Seabank screen. You can see where this is going, can't you? I plugged my phone into the TV screen, which meant I could watch, well, pretty much whatever I wanted to on the Seatback screen. The BBC iPlayer is a little slow, but you can download plenty of stuff such as Netflix and then watch it on the big screen while all the crew wander over to you to coo at you and say, oh, isn't that clever? Unfortunately, once a half a dozen other passengers in the cabin got wind of this trick, everybody was trying it and the interweb slowed to an agonizing crawl. Still time for a beer, and a Lefe beer will hit the spot of the palate cleanser, but the crew apologised, again, that they didn't have any more beer glasses loaded as a truck from Heathrow with them got stuck on the M23 to Gatters, but they could nip downstairs to get one. From economy. Yeah, a paper cup. Now, I've heard some excuses before, and indeed we're somewhere short of Alex Ferguson ascribing a poor performance to his team's grey away kit. Surely the Sistine Chapel of ministerial excuses, but no beer glasses in business because of the M23? Really? Good beer though. Café is made by Anhauser Busch. It's uh, originally from Namur in southern Belgium, but the brewery was destroyed in 1794, and now all the beer is made in the Stella Artois factory in Lorven. Blondes really should be 6.6, .6, but in the UK we get a special variant at just 6%, and it's ideal on the train journey commute out of London, or equally at 41,000 feet as you head over the Black Sea to the safety of Mosul. To go with it, the crew offered some sandwiches from the bar, and I went for the egg mayo. This was a bad mistake. Now, if the Emirates Business Class Lounge is an example of Dubai bling, then the cabin is a perfect example of it. It's got lots of plastic burled walnut veneer, gold trim, and pearlized plastic, which frames the seats, windows, and entertainment screen. It's about as far from modern minimalism as you can get. All of Emirates business class seats are located in two cabins on the upper deck. There's a front cabin which contains the bulk of the seats in 14 rows, while the cabin located at the rear of the plane has got a much more cosy feel and there are only four rows, although it's quite close to the bar, which, depending on whether you plan to make several visits, is either great news or a hindrance. My personal flying pub's an older style one with just benches at the side, but the crew were keen that I try the in-flight bar, mainly to give them something to do as there were so few other people around. You can choose from top-notch tipples, exclusive wines, champagne, beer and of course cocktails mixed on demand. That sounds like it. I went for the mojito with Bacardi rum muddled with fresh lime, mint and sugar topped with a splash of soda. It was lovely and one of the best mojitos I've had on a plane. It was, as you expect, served with warm nuts. The bar was fully stocked for a full flight with a lot of canopies, but as the crew explained, there are only a few passengers in business class, so I can have a pick of everything, including the rather out-of-place fruitcake. There's only access to those ponying up in first or business class, and on many London-bound flights, it becomes party city throughout the flight. You certainly don't want to come in here for some quiet. The crew also offered to mix me up as many cocktails as I'd like to taste, and I don't mind if I do. I followed it up with a martini with gin and dry vermouth. It's uh, of course got an olive in it, getting slowly pickled, rather like the newts at the bar as we head over Iraq and the dry, arid states around the Gulf. Other cocktails on offer include a breakfast martini, Kira or Royale, a cosmopolitan and a Manhattan, uh, with a garnish on the side of as many chocolates as you can wave a cocktail shaker at. I had to try each and every one to ensure they're of the finest quality, uh, of the cocktails of course, not the chocolates, before moving on to the safe sanity of the wine. My usual dependable bottle was sitting there waiting for me, the Napa Valley Chardonnay from Mountain Select, and it really does get better the further down the bottle you get. Created by the Antinori Napa Valley Vineyard, it doesn't do cellar door tastings, alas, 
They're known for their super Tuscan wine. Yep, California after all. And this estate wine lives up to their greatly deserved reputation with a lovely burgundy star Chardonnay. A couple of glasses of that and the crew suggested I move on to the La Abatille 2019 from Bordeaux. Knocked out by the Chateau de Frenzel, it mainly only makes Cab Savon Merlot, but it still makes 4,000 cases a year of white, which I'm determined to make a serious dent in. It's a lovely safe space to wait for the bongs, and that will be it, to tell us it's 10 minutes to landing and the crew can pour me back into my seat. Now you may remember when the A380 was launched, I was at Toulouse and posted a video over a decade ago, bizarrely wondering what the point was of a bar at the back of an aircraft. Oh, how wrong I was. Compared to sitting in your seat just watching a film, it makes the entire flight a wonderful, sociable and really quite luxurious experience. On the latest A380s, Emirates have revamped the rear lounge and instead of a bench seat you can slide into, one side of the lounge has got a large table with 2 plus 2 seating and an even bigger TV screen showing live sport. But right now, that's just back in the land of wishful drinking because we're landing in Dubai, also known as Venice of the Gulf, apparently, by those bods in marketing. So how did I find the Emirates A380 business class experience? Well, I found the aircraft quietly sitting at the gate where I left it earlier at Gatwick. But going from Gatwick really is a delight as well. Far fewer customers and actually often much easier to get to, particularly on a train. Now, I've been sitting in business class ultra long haul every few weeks for nearly 30 years. And I tell you what, goodness, it gets boring. However, Emirates still offer one of the best birds aloft to combat that very plain feeling of, once again, 24 hours with nothing to do other than some of the finest wines known to humanity. The joy of being able to sit in a pub rather than at an airline seat makes it worth beating a path to Emirates door. Despite being over 10 years old, the cabin aboard my plane was really in excellent shape. It still appeared fresh, clean and polished. The entire upper deck is dedicated to the premium cabins and created a kind of exclusive private jet-like atmosphere. I'm annoyed that Emirates have cut down the meal service from two to one meal on the really very short hop down to Dubai, but it's probably a good idea. After all, frequent travel broadens more than the mind and I often just sleep through a flight to avoid that bloated feeling that comes from a premium or first class cabin. Next up, I've got the horror of Emirates Boeing 777 down to Australia. And once again, the rule applies of, if it's a Boeing, I'm really not going. Long may Emirates continue to fly the Airbus A380. 